Okay, today we're going to talk about factoring difficult trinomials, but don't let the name scare you. Um, they're just because they're just called difficult trinomials because they're not as easy as the trinomials with a leading coefficient of one. But um, we're going to learn a couple of different ways to factor these difficult trinomials. There's several different methods that can be used. Um, and I'm going to talk about two methods, the guess and check method and factoring a trinomial by grouping methods. And it doesn't matter what method you use, um, either one of these that I show you, I don't care which one you use. And then, like I said, of course, there are other methods that you can research and learn. So we're going to start out by doing the guess and check method. Well, you know that anytime you factor a trinomial, it should the answer should be two binomials. So our answer is going to look the same as it did when we were factoring the easier trinomials. And whatever goes in the first two spots have to multiply to give us the first term. And whatever um, goes in the last two spots have to multiply to give us the last term. We, we're we going backwards from foiling. So the product or the, the whatever we add or subtract um, when we get the product of these inner and outer terms have to give us this middle term. So the reason why it's called guess and check is because um, we're going to plug the things in and then we're going to check it and see if it works. And if not, then we'll reorder it or use different factors. So this first example, um, it's a little easier because both of these outer terms are prime numbers. So we know that the only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. The only factors of 7 are 7 and 1. So we know we're going to use those numbers. The only thing that's in question is the order. Okay, so for 3x squared, what can we multiply to get 3x squared? 3x and x. All right, for 7, what can we multiply to get 7? 1 and 7. Now, we do the same thing as we did with the easier trinomials. This tells us... Um, if my signs are going to be the same or different. This says that they're different, so we know we're going to be subtracting. So before I fill in the, the signs, um, I'm going to do my little smiley face to see if I have everything in the right order. So I know I'm going to be subtracting. Well, this multiplies to give me 1x, and this multiplies to give me 21x. Well, I know if I subtract 1 from 21, I'm not going to get 4. So that tells me these are not in the right order. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. And I'm just going to switch the order of these last two terms. So I had 1 and 7. Now I'm going to put 7 and 1. Okay, so that would be 7x. And that would be 3x. Which, when I subtract, would give me 4x. Now, I need the 4x to be negative. So that means... This number, the 7, needs to be negative, not the 3. If the 3 were negative and the 7 was positive, then I would get a positive 4x. Okay, so in order for this 7 to be negative, let me just back it up. This would need to be negative, and then this would be positive to make that be a positive 3x. And now, I know everything is, is in the right order. I, I guessed, and I checked, and it checks out correctly when they're like this. Now, just like before in any of the other methods of factoring that we've talked about, if you had written your answer as x plus 1 and then 3x minus 7, as long as the stuff in the group is the same, you can switch the order of the groups and, you'll, and it's still correct. Okay, so let's look at number 2. Two sets of parentheses. Again, we have prime numbers on the ends, so that makes it easier. So... Um, the only thing I can multiply to get 7x squared would be 7x and x. The only thing I can multiply to get 2 would be 1 and 2. Okay, so this is an, a minus, so I know that I would be subtracting my inner and outer terms. So let's just see if this is going to work. So that would be a 1x. That would be 14x which, if I subtract, will not give me 5x. So again, let's switch the order of these numbers. That would give me 2x, 
and then that would be 7x, which when I subtract would give me 5x. Now, I need my 5x to be a positive 5x, so this, the 7 needs to be positive and the 2 should be negative. Okay, so again, if I back it up to make the 2x negative, I need a negative sign here and then a positive sign in order for the 7 to be positive. And that's it. All right, number three. Start out with my two sets of parentheses. Okay, five is prime, so I know to get five x squared, I would multiply five x and x, but six is not prime. Six has factors of one and six, and it also has the factors of two and three. So we're gonna have to try um, a couple, you know, if, if it doesn't work, we'll have to go in with different factors and try the different factors. Okay, so if I start with 2 and 3, let's see if we'll be adding or subtracting. Okay, this tells me I'm going to be subtracting. So that's 2x and 15x. Well, 2x and 15x will not give me 1x. Okay. So if I switch the order, 3 and 2, that's 3x and that's 10x. Again, that will not give me 1x. So 2 and 3 for factors does not work. So let's try 1 and 6. Okay, so if I put the 6 here and the 1 here, that's 6x and 5x. And if I put those together, if I subtract, that gives me the 1x that I'm looking for. Now, my 1x needs to be negative, so the bigger number needs to be negative, and that needs to be positive. Okay, so when I back up, that should be negative, and that's positive. And this would be my solution. All right, number four. Remember, any time we're working with any when we're doing any factoring, the first thing we should always look for is a greatest common factor. Now, none of these other three had greatest common factors, but number four does. What do they all have in common? What can they all be divided by? Three. So I'm going to factor out a three, and that leaves me with 4x squared minus 5x plus 1. Okay, now remember, when we factor out a greatest common factor, that just tags along with our answer for the rest of the time. Okay, and then here I'm going to break it up into two sets of parentheses. Okay, so 1 is a prime number, so I know that 1 times 1 is what has to go in these spots. But for 4, it could be 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. Which one do you think we should choose? Well, since we're shooting for 5, I'm going to go with the 1 and 4 and see if that works. Okay, so if I do 4x and x, 4x times x would be 4x squared. 1 times 1 is 1. Now, let's see if this will give us the 5. Now, we are adding to try to get 5. So this is 1x plus 4x, and that gives me 5x. Now, when we're adding, that makes it easier. Um, remember, my signs are the same, and this tells me what they are, so they're both negative. So that would give me a negative 1x and a negative 4x, which would give me the negative 5x that I needed. And remember, when we have a greatest common factor, that is part of our answer, so make sure that that 3 is included in your answer. So now we're going to try the same thing, the same um, trinomials. We're going to factor the same trinomials, but this time we're going to use a different method. Okay, so we're going to factor using the grouping method. Now the way we do that is we take the two outer terms and multiply them together. So if I multiply 3 times 7 together, I get 21. Okay, so then I need the factors of 21 that will give me that middle term. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what are the factors of 21? 1 times 21. Um, 2 won't go into it. 3 times 7. And then that's it. 
So which of those, and, and these should be x's, 1x and 21x, 3x and 7x, which of these would subtract to give me 4x? It would be the 7 and 7x and the 3x. Now to get a negative 4x, it would be a negative 7x and a positive 3x. So once I figure that out, these two, th positive 3x minus 7x equals negative 4x, right? So I can take this negative 4x and just replace it with these two terms, and it would be exactly the same equation, right? Okay, so let me rewrite my equation. And it doesn't matter what order you write these in. I can do plus 3x minus 7x, or I could have done negative 7x plus 3x. It doesn't matter. Um, it'll, it'll end up working out to be uh, the same thing. Now I have four terms. So now we factor by grouping. Remember when we are uh, factoring by grouping, we group the first two terms together, leave the sign in the middle, group the last two terms together. But remember, if that sign in the middle is negative, then we have to change the second sign. Okay, so change that to a plus. Now we look in each group and we get the greatest common factor in each group. Well, the greatest common factor in this first group is 3x. If I divide both of these by 3x, I would get x plus 3x divided by 3x is 1. Bring down the minus sign. What's the greatest common factor in these two terms? 7. If I factor out a 7, I'm left with x plus 1. Okay, so now we take out um, what they what's the same, the x plus 1. And we write what's left, which is 3x minus 7. And that's my answer. So let's see if that's the same thing that we got whenever we were doing guess and check. Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. The x plus 1 and 3x minus 7. So um, remember, it doesn't matter what order they're in. We still got the same answer. Okay, so let's do the rest of these by grouping. Okay, so remember the first step is take the two n terms and multiply them together. So if I take those two and multiply them together, I get 14, it'd be 14x squared. That's what I should have had here too. Um, and the factors of 14 are 1 and 14, 2 and 7. Okay, so if I multiply if I multiply 2x times 7x, I get 14x squared. If I multiply 1x times 14x, I get 14x squared. Now, which of these would subtract to give me 5x squared? These two. Since my 5x is positive, the bigger one needs to be positive, and the smaller one needs to be negative. So I'm going to take this and replace 5x, <coughs> the plus 5x, with these two terms. And again, it doesn't matter which order you write them in. Okay, now let's factor by grouping. Group the first two, leave the sign in the middle, group the last two. In the first group, what do they have in common? An x. And if I divide by x, I'm left with 7x minus 2. In the last group, what do they have in common? They don't have anything in common, but remember, um, if there's nothing in common, we can always factor out a 1, and we have to factor something out whenever we're factoring by grouping. Now, um, make sure that the things in the parentheses are the same, and they are, so I'm going to factor that out and write what's left, which is x plus 1. All right, for number three, if I multiply the two ends together, I get 30x squared, and the factors of 30x squared are 1x times 30x, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 
and 5 and 6. So which ones would subtract to give me 1? The 5x and the 6x. <clears throat> and the bigger number needs to be negative. So I'm going to take this and replace this middle term with those two terms. Okay, again, parentheses around the first two. Leave the sign in the middle. Since it's negative, change this sign. What do these two terms have in common? 5x. So if I divide this by 5x, I'm left with x. Plus 5x divided by 5x is 1. Minus, what do these have in common? 6. If I divide by 6, I'm left with x plus 1. The x plus 1s are what they have in common. So I factor that out, and I'm left with 5x minus 6. And that's my answer. All right, and then the last one, remember this is the one with uh, the greatest common factor. <clears throat> so we're going to factor that out first. The greatest common factor was 3. Um, I'm going to use a bracket just because there's going to be several sets of parentheses. So I'm going to use a bracket for um, the group. If I divide everything by 3, I'm left with 4x squared minus 5x plus 1. Okay, so now if I multiply these two together, <coughs> 4 time, 4x squared times 1, I get 4x squared. And the factors of 4x squared are 1x times um, 4x, and then 2x and 2x. So which ones will add to give me 5x? This 1 and 4. So th this tells me my signs are the same. They're both negative. A negative 1x minus 4x is the same as a negative 5x. So let me replace that. And then I'm going to group this stuff in the middle. Now that um, greatest common factor just tags along on the outside. Again, here is a negative. When I put up the parentheses, I need to change this sign. Right now it's a positive, so I need to change it to a negative. Okay, and the greatest common factor in this group, they both have an x. And when I divide by x, I'm left with 4x minus 1. The greatest common factor in this group would just be 1. Okay, 4x minus 1 is what they have in common. So I take that out. And I'm left with x minus 1. So this whole thing along with that 3 is my answer.